Hi everyone, it's Deb Jordan. I'm, I'm joined today uh, by and with uh, Staff Sergeant Mo. Say hello to everybody. Hello. Okay, hello. yep, Staff Sergeant Mo. Listen, you guys, a lot of things have happened in the last 24 hours and it's, it's like increasingly insane here in Portland, but we're gonna give you, um, we're gonna give you a few updates that we have. Now, um, I'm sure that everybody was glued to um, YouTube last night and early this morning when the FBI decided that they were going to go against their work and the people up there in the refuge and, and go in and get them out before Michelle Fiore, uh, Franklin Graham, and um, I, I believe there was a, a Matt, Shea Matt Shea could go in and escort them out. They had made to the people in the refuge that uh, they would do that, that they were down for that. But instead, they decided that they were going to go in and take them out by force, which is typical of what our FBI. Coming in in wraps, several black uh, SUV type vehicles, all filled with bodies, um, coming in hard, honestly, uh, and encroached on them up to about 50 meters out according to what they reported uh, while live on the phone with Gavin Stein. Yeah, and so, you know, you can imagine, we were like extremely concerned listening to it. Um, I heard them ask Gavin Stein for permission to know where she was. And at that point, they were pretty hysterical. Gavin says, um, gosh, I don't have her number. Does anybody have her number? I contacted Michelle Fiore immediately she had just landed here in Portland, and um, I gave her the information, told her the siege was happening now, and you can imagine she was distraught. She couldn't believe that the FBI was doing this, okay? And, and um, so she was being picked up by Emma Bundy, and the next thing we know, everybody's on the road. We're all calling in the background back and forth to one another, trying to get you know, trying to get some kind of organization together. And, and eventually it ended today with a peaceful uh, um, surrender of David Fry. Now, I got to tell you guys something. I was listening to David, and I was on the phone with um, Gavin, uh, with Gavin Symes' brother, um, Nathan. Nathan, in the background. And, I, I, you know, and I've talked to David Fry a couple of times. He's very talkative. He talked to a lot of people, not just me in the last two weeks since he's been up there. So I had a pretty good idea of uh, where his mind was. And, and so we did get to help in that respect. And I'm so thankful for, um, for listening and such a great with David Fry. He really did. I tell you guys, there toward the end, there's something in the last 10 minutes that told me that David Fry was is going, was doing nothing more than uh, messing mm -hmm. with the FBI. You know, when he, went, mm -hmm. when he went into his tent. So <laughs> I, I was happy that he got his hallelujah out of them. The whole pizza thing. All he wanted was his weed. And his pizza. And his pizza. And, um, and to have them say hallelujah, hallelujah. And one last cigarette, one last cookie. One last cigarette, one last cookie. That's a t-shirt right there. So I... I think well, he, he Gavin gave him the uh, platform to speak his grievances. He really, I think, in the end, felt in his soul that people cared about him. That um, he had finally gotten to say, got to say, I mean, what he needed to say. And we're happy that you know it all came out in the end with no one hurt. Right? No, no further. No uh, further. Uh, fatalities. Um, he was in a dark place. They all were. Uh, and David Fry, extremely so. And for this to be the peaceful ending that it was and resulted in with Chris Ann Hall's assistant, assistance with uh, Michelle Fiari's, with Franklin Graham's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Pastor Frank, Frank uh, with Gavin Syme and his brother, uh, Nathan, and a few others in the background, like Deb Jordan. Um, you know, that was a miracle. 
a miracle because they were in a dark place in their minds and they felt isolated and alone. And you know, even though they had some contact with people on the outside, only limited information was really uh, getting to them to include some of the um, rumors and hearsay that can actually have uh, made the situation uh, much worse, honestly. Uh, as almost, and I would compare that to the antagonistic activities of uh, certain FBI agents on the ground that were antagonizing. Um, I would say that the hearsay rumors and things online and the uh, uh, crap talking uh, contributed in antagonizing an already very bad situation uh, while people were working to uh, ethically, morally, and in that um, piece bring the battle to the courts and expose the federal court system for all its wrongdoings as we go through the process. Because let me tell you, Deb Jordan and I are witnesses to some very scandalous activities inside the courtrooms, and we will continue to report on that. Yeah, we will. As a matter of fact, so Nang, um, here to Portland last night, you guys know that Clive and Bundy flew into Portland and was met by a SWAT team. He was arrested and taken into custody. He was charged, we can confirm that he was charged with the same thing that everybody else has been arrested for so far, um, but we are looking into some other charges that we heard, and I don't want to put those out there um, until we have absolutely vetted that and 100%. Now, Brandon Curtis is on his way here. He's going to be coming live with me a little bit later uh, tonight. We'll be doing another live broadcast, so stay, stay tuned for that. He has some information. And... Um, we're going to continue our uh, quest here to keep you guys informed, uh, not with live stream 24/7, because I just don't have the um, I don't have the equipment to do that, and I don't have the, um, the the actually to tell you the truth, I just don't have the time to do that. But I will be updating you guys um, as as much as possible from from uh, here on out. Um, and may I interrupt just for a second? Sure. Or, you don't let have me, to ask. Let me ex explain some of the activities uh, in general uh, that Deb Jordan is enduring right now. Let me tell you, I mean, she is on the phone with her attorney. She's also in contact and still uh, in communication to include myself with uh, other family members of concern that are also being held prisoner right now. Um, she is working uh, not just for Pete Santilli, but let me tell you, her heart is still with everybody else. But the amount of detail and homework given to Deb Jordan just for Pete Santilli alone is very time consuming to answer all the questions that she needs to. I mean, this is this is her the love of her life, her life partner, uh, and she is battling that battle. And uh, she's not alone. We have many supporters out there, and uh, I can't wait to see your guys' physical presence here in Portland to stand with Deb Jordan and myself, uh, not only for Pete Santilli and the First Amendment right, but all of the Constitution that is the new battleground in the court system in Portland, Oregon. Uh, and, and she's so busy uh, with so many things. interviews that are recommended by her attorney. Uh, very, he, he's got uh, great people in very high places that she is recommended to speak with, and she is doing that. Um, and, you know, we're still battling the mainstream media's uh, mantra where they're reporting more fairly at times. However, there's still that slant and in the incorrect information that is out there that we must constantly battle and correct. Uh, and that's not just, again, for Pete Santilli, but for all of those that are being held and, and, and making sure the message that Pete Santilli not only supported and, and voiced, but that we continue to voice that ourselves as well, because that message is still clear, active, fluid, and necessary to educate the American people. That's right. And, and make no mistake about this. And that is, is that it's not just these uh, patriots that are, going, that are going to be on trial here in, in Portland. It's the Constitution itself. These are constitutional issues, and um, a lot of stuff is going to be happening here. This is an important part of history taking place, and we want to make sure that we give you guys correct information. Um, we love you guys. Just remember that, though, that you must be able to separate fact. Don't fall into the um, – don't fall into the – trap there that are that that are just hell-bent 
on leading you down the wrong path of disinfo and, of disinfo and distraction okay so hang with us i know that you would love for us to be on here 24 hours a day but it's just at this point it's impossible regular updates now um we do have a message from pete he he um he recorded this yesterday and um this was before the uh, fbi encroached on the um on uh, on the refuge so i do want to play that for you guys uh while while you're here his day. oh and it's a good message open your ears people Mm, right. Narrative. This is the narrative. And and he will um, he will be giving us another message today sometime that I'll play for you guys tonight. So you get two messages from Pete in a row. Here it is. Hope you guys enjoy. Here you go. Pete Santilli. Go. 